Sometimes two just isn't better than one. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst buddy cop movies. Is that how he's gonna do it? Hey, I'm, I'm laying my shit out. Look, freeze, LAPD, that shit is right perfect. For this list, we'll be looking at the most dreadful movies featuring two people teaming up to catch a criminal or to solve any other sort of case, where at least one of them is a cop or other law enforcement officer. I didn't get a peek at your wife's ankles. Not one more word about her. If you'd like to see a list on the opposite end of the spectrum, then check out our video of the top 10 buddy cop films. But if you like seeing the bad more than the good, then lock yourselves in, because here we go. You shot him. <sighs> no shit. Number 10, Cop Out. Knock, knock. Jim, don't do it. Kevin Smith has made films for a couple of decades now. Great films like Clerks, and then awful films like this one. I've worked too GT hard. You gonna smoke somebody? FNA, right I am. Ma'am, just please put the gun down. In the appropriately titled Cop Out, Bruce Willis's character Jimmy is trying to pay for his daughter's wedding and tries to sell a baseball card to raise the money. Baseball card? Jim, listen, if you need 20 bucks, I got- Asshole, I don't need 20 bucks. I'm selling it to cover my daughter's wedding, all right? After it's stolen from him, he teams up with fellow detective Paul Hodges, played by Tracy Morgan, to get it back. While that premise is already flimsy, the characters are even worse. How many guns did you get? This is the hidden nanny cam that I had in my bedroom. Morgan plays up his more annoying qualities at every turn, and the year following the movie's release, Kevin Smith revealed just how much of a pain in the ass it is to work with Willis. And you know what? It consistently shows on screen. Jimmy Kanye, motherfucker! I've never seen that movie. Number 9. R.I.P.D. Come on, tighten up. A movie so terrible that it made our top 10 worst movies of 2013 list. R.I.P.D. or the Rest in Peace Department is the perfect example of good actors making horrible film choices. When exactly was your day? 1800, buddy. I'm what we used to call a lawman. Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds play undead officers who work to kill monsters disguised as humans, known as deados. Now listen and learn. Deado. Put off a bad dead mojo. The result? The plot sucked, the dialogue sucked, the action section sucked, and the movie was a box office bomb. It was everything that Men in Black, its inspiration, wasn't. That is, it wasn't fun. Deados on wheels! Ryan Reynolds deserves better, Jeff Bridges deserves better, and we deserve our money back. Relax, buddy! <laughs> Number 8. Turner and Hooch Don't eat the car! I got the car! So dig this, kids. Turner and Hooch was released July 28, 1989, exactly three months after a movie called Canine. What? What do you want? There's no one up here! So the hell what, you say? Well, here's the hell what. The two films have practically the same plot, but Turner and Hooch ended up being way more popular. Ah! You! Ah, you stupid dog! No. How, you ask? Because big-timer Tom Hanks was cast in the starring role. All right, these are the simple rules. No barking, no growling. You will not lift your leg to anything in this house. Both films involve the lead actor playing a police investigator who's partnered with a dog to take down the criminal. Ridiculous, right? If you hate the police and you're not fond of dogs, this is definitely not the movie for you. Oh, what am I yelling at you for? You're a dog. Number 7. Loose Cannons Would you mind turning that off, please? It disrupts my energy patterns. Well, we can't have that, can we? Regarded by Roger Ebert as an all-time low for buddy cop films, Loose Cannons stars Dan Aykroyd and Gene Hackman as police officers working to solve murder mysteries. Oh, they're still here. I don't know what her story is. Aykroyd's character suffers from multiple personality disorder, which is the only good thing about the film because of the humor it adds. I know it's kind of blank, but it's this MPD thing. MPD? Well, my condition, multiple personality disorder. That aside, the action sequences are so cheesy it looks like third graders are playing cops and robbers, which might be why the film only made back a third of its $15 million budget. No! We'll jump! jump! You crazy! You wanna die? I can't get up! Are you nuts? You couldn't possibly think! If you didn't go see this movie in theaters, you missed absolutely nothing. I swear to God, if I get killed, I'm gonna sue you guys. Number six, Top Dog. Find the drugs, Reno. Had a boy. If you're someone who gets a kick out of watching bad movies, then put Top Dog on your radar. 
This place isn't fit for a dog. You will not be surprised to find out this is another movie involving a cop being teamed up with a canine companion. Come on, Reno. Let's go. Although this one had the roundhousing Chuck Norris as the star, perhaps as a favor to his writing, directing younger brother, Top Dog was criticized for A, being too similar to K-9 and Turner and Hooch, and B, dealing with terrorism around the time of the Oklahoma City bombing. Still, we don't think that was the only reason no one wanted to watch this thing. Okay, Reno, I'll take over. Get out of here, Reno. Number five, Cop and a Half. What are you? I'm your worst nightmare. An eight-year-old with a badge. Devin Butler dreams of being a cop when he reaches adulthood. Why don't you just go ahead and give us that plate number? And then we can all go home. Okay. Make me a cop. Butler gets his wish at eight years old, however, when he trades info about a murder for a job as a cop. The boy is teamed with Burt Reynolds' Nick McKenna, who absolutely hates children, obviously. We don't have a love-hate relationship. We have a hate Hate relationship. What you get is a movie in which the two actors appear to have absolutely no chemistry together, and where it feels like McKenna is going through bring your kids to work unless you want to get fired day. What are we here for? Stake out. It's your shift. The actor that played Devin, Norman D. Golden II, was even nominated for a Razzie Award for Worst New Star. However, Roger Ebert gave it a thumbs up, so that's something. I'm an eight-year-old, not a miracle worker. In a car. Number four, Taxi. All right, but I'm still running this meter. There are great film remakes, and then there are film remakes that never should have been made. This is definitely in the latter category. Come on now. If you ever gonna learn how to drive, we gotta play to your strengths. And thinking ain't one of them a remake of the 1998 French film of the same name. This action comedy, and we use both terms loosely, sees Queen Latifah play a taxi driver who dreams of becoming a race car driver, and Jimmy Fallon is a clumsy cop who partners with her to catch a group of bank robbers. Shot yeah, it's not important right now. What's important right now is they're gonna rob another bank. First financial at Leonard and Church, and they hit two minutes ago and they're still inside. Let's just say the film doesn't even live up to that stellar premise. With an obvious BMW stunt double, an unconvincing Cuban impression by Fallon, if you guys ever in, hey, if you guys ever in Havana, you give me a call. Yeah, no, okay, go. we'll have some tequila, some cerveza, you know, okay? And a plot involving a group of women led by Brazilian model Giselle Bunchen robbing banks in New York. Give me the cash! No more gang! Go first! Number three, collision course. What you did was not nice, young man. This disaster of a film didn't come to the U.S. until three years after its release overseas. Even then, it went straight to home video. And honestly, they shouldn't have even bothered. What the hell is going on here? Hey, get the hell back down there. Jay Leno plays a racist and arrogant cop who's paired with a Japanese inspector to recover a stolen turbocharger. Prepare for me. After the fact, it was revealed that the production team ran out of money on the last day of filming, and that Leno wished he had never done the film. And it shows. Godzilla's attacking the city. For the love of God, stay in your home. Will you shut up? Collision Course is painfully unfunny, and watching it can easily put someone to sleep. Anyone who had high hopes for this movie probably cried after wasting 100 minutes of his or her life viewing it. The gun's mine. I paid for it myself. Number two, stop or my mom will shoot. Stop! Or my mom will shoot! You know your movie sucks when the main star calls it, quote, maybe one of the worst films in the entire solar system, including alien productions we've never seen. Go ahead, make your bed. Sylvester Stallone was apparently tricked into starring in the movie, as he was made to believe he was beating Arnold Schwarzenegger to the punch. Well, you don't have to apologize. I deserve to get hit. I mean, I made a mess out of everything. In the film, Sly plays a cop who's visited by his mother, played by Estelle Getty. She immediately gets on her son's nerves, but later starts to help him on an important case. I gave it to him good, didn't I? <laughs> you blew away. His ass was grass and I was the lawnmower. The comedy tries to show the good mother-son bond, but ends up a low-budget travesty with no redeeming features. This movie actually makes the other films on this list look like masterpieces. Go ahead, shoot. Jesus. Pull the trigger. I don't want to live in a world where my son locks me in a car. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. A newbie. Nope. A newbie. You have any idea what level player I am? Nope. You have no idea. 
My gamer tag is spoken in hushed terms of awe and envy. Incidentally, I am trying to make the tech. You take the exam? Yeah, I failed it twice. What makes you think you won't fail it a third time? Well, the first two times, I wasn't working with the great Mitch Preston. Don't worry, Captain. We're gonna make you proud. And try not to think about your wife leaving you. She'll come back. Sue Young's here. I haven't seen her since she was 10 years old. She lives in Los Angeles now. Nah, yo, hold my poodle. Hold my poodle. Hey, yo, what's up? Y'all got a problem? Y'all want some of this? You want some of this, punk? What? What, boy, what? Number one, Theodore Rex. Hey, Teddy! Hey, Tina! How are you? I'm fine. You? I'm fine. During production, Whoopi Goldberg tried to get out of this project, but found herself trapped due to contract restraints. Isn't it a little strange to you that both these guys were made extinct on the same night and they both just happened to work for you? As a result, someone had to sit through this horrible film, where Goldberg is paired with a Tyrannosaurus Rex in order to stop a villain from creating a new Ice Age. He is the one! Shoot him! Shoot him! The premise alone makes it sound like the movie was directed, produced, and written by seven-year-olds. And the execution is not much better. In fact, it may actually be worse. Just tiptoe. And okay. what is that smell? Is that you? It's not me. How could it be me? Did you... Look, I didn't butt trumpet. One of these Fine. things is leaking. Fine. All the dinosaurs look terribly creepy, and there is not one joke that will even make you chuckle. If dinosaurs saw this, they'd probably go extinct by choice in order to avoid ever seeing it again. It's a real pleasure working with a professional like yourself. <laughs> what do you have on the case? <clears throat> do you agree with our list? Hello? Huh? What means flea clinic? Sound like Polish name. Which buddy cops would you laugh at if they tried to arrest you? For more interesting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You schmucks! I have a hole in my ass! That's why they call you an asshole.